Hey, what's going on YouTube? What's happening? Welcome to or welcome back to Kovacs Corner. I appreciate you taking the time. Come through, check the video out. So we're here with another React video. I know I've been out for a couple of days. Sick, everybody was sick. Uh, but yeah, no, man, we're about to get back into it. I shouted out to MiniQuest64 over on X, aka Twitter, and asked him if it was alright for me to react to his uh, to his models, his diagram videos for Warcraft 3. He ended up doing a bunch of landscapes for Warcraft 3, which is pretty cool. Uh, don't forget, go check them out if you're into uh, miniatures and models and stuff like that. So right off the bat, back in the day, when I first started my YouTube channel, I wanted to start doing miniatures and models and stuff like that, and I was like into that quite a bit. I was watching a bunch of different videos on how to paint, all this, that, and the third, acrylic paints, oil paints, so on and so forth, mod podge. Uh, but yeah, I ended up finding out how expensive it was. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, TCG is mad expensive as well, but I didn't have the funds for that. So I do that like off to one side by myself kind of thing. Maybe one time I'll get a model and we could get into it. But yeah, no man, huge shout out to MiniQuest64 for allowing me to react to his videos. I asked his permission, he said cool. Make sure you go check him out over on YouTube, MiniQuest64. All links are going to be down in the description. So without further ado, we're about to get into it. He's doing his first, we're going to be doing like a little series of it too because he ended up doing all the races. We're going to be dealing with the first race right here, which is what is it? Crafting the Ultimate Warcraft 3 Diorama. Models, Battles, and Magic. Let's get into it. Warcraft 3 ROC. It's where I started. That's the best game ever. Ever. Remember the time Warcraft 3 was actually good before Reforged showed us how to yes. ruin a perfect experience. <laughs> Back when it was good. Well, join me on. I like the way how he has these little, these little clips of him. Request <laughs> and let's build something actually worthy. It's legend. Back then, you started the campaign. I miss this man. I miss this layout for ROC. It was such a dope game. The prices and costs of all units were different. The u the unit structures were different. The battle damages were different. There was a bunch of different things that you were able to do. Obviously, they've made a plethora of changes. Just a bunch of changes throughout the game. Now it's in Reforged on top of they're always doing updates now. And uh, yeah, I miss ROC. <laughs> With the humans. And we will do the same thing. Huh. <laughs> you got some great looking cut. I like these little clips that he does. He's coming through. Getting ready with his hard hat, looking like uh, like a construction foreman. That's <laughs> some shit. Can I borrow some of these? <laughs> oh, some nice shit. <laughs> this and that. I'm gonna Expecting take a little bit of this, that, and third. All right. First thing. And don't forget, hit his channel up, subscribe. I like the way how he does that too, with that little piece of paper. Acting like he's uh, reading blueprints real quick. <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> thing to do: search for some 3D models to print. Sadly, some of the good models were missing, and the another bunch wasn't optimized for printing. There was definitely a huge choice of characters with a lot of details and for tabletop gaming, but to be honest, not what I was looking for. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm gonna go build my own theme park with Fusion 3. <laughs> That's the best. That was one of the dopest episodes of Futurama. I love the references. <laughs> I'm gonna go build my own casino <laughs> with blackjacks. <laughs> so on and so forth. <laughs> and degree that finally pays off. So what do mechanical engineers do? Basically, we draw a 2D sketch and then we add stuff and then we draw a 2D sketch again and we take stuff away. Yeah, that's it. Something else that I enjoy that he does, he actually shows what it is and dimensions and stuff like that over here he kind of gives you a little bit of a rundown a breakdown of what he's doing for his 3d printers and stuff like that in order to make the models on top of he'll he ends up showing how tedious it is to print certain characters and stuff to get all the dimensions and all that 
but it also depends on the 3D printer that you're dealing with, right? You could have a small one doing small things, a bigger one doing big things. Sometimes you have to break your model into separate pieces as you print it so that you can put it together, whether or not your 3D printer is big enough to print it all in one, or if you just want to do something really big where you end up breaking it down into pieces and then sticking it together. And that's pretty cool, man. And then we Too expensive. Go to the sketch again, <laughs> and we take stuff away. Yeah, yeah. that's it. That's all you need to know. <laughs> and why don't you use Blender like literally everyone else does? Because I'm too dumb. <laughs> Misha, get your fluffy ass up. We got you. Yeah, it's poopers. Farm. Lumber mill. Tower. <laughs> you got the peon over here, just busting a move. Gold mine. Altar. Barracks. So it's like you can do for the 3D printing and stuff for the programs from what I've learned and seen is you could do half of it, make it really detailed, flip it, mirror it and put two together unless you're doing a bigger model as we already said about the sizes of the 3d printers overall right it all depends on the size of the model that you want to do but if it's a bunch of tabletop stuff for a diorama you should be able to get like you probably get like two to three different uh buildings on one plate nice creating models for 40 hours so you can watch a one minute clip I love his sense of humor, <laughs> but it's facts, right? Nice. It like lines up, it lines up pretty nice. I like the way how it came out overall. Alter, the altar came out looking real nice too. Barracks came out dope. So, hold on. So as you can see, it's a little bit rough around the edges, but he's about to go over all these miniatures that he ended up creating and like filing it down, using a straight razor to get rid of these little nicks, sand it a little bit, prime it, prep it, ready to go kind of thing. So it's, I feel like it's gonna look amazing. Town Hall, nice. Awesome. Get all models on Patreon. Feel free, go check his Patreon out if you're into miniatures and or models and painting. Check it out, man, check them out. Buildings are now ready to assemble and let me tell you how it feels to be able to create your own models. Freaking good. <laughs> now, how do we get this beautiful forest <laughs> landscape? Sorry, okay, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I mean, how can we bring this Warcraft landscape to life? First, you need some very hard piece of wood. <laughs> okay, I, I can. <laughs> We're childish over here, man. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> the night elf. <laughs> and, uh, a very hard piece of wood. <laughs> and stop it. <laughs> then we add a chunky piece of XPS foam on top and unload some sick lines of PVA glue. After some drying time, I used my Proxon hot wire to cut the XPS in shape and then I placed all the buildings on top and marked their positions. I used a cheap knife to cut some rock formations into our base. This will help to get some shape and variety into the landscape. For making like landscapes and stuff like that, I like that's a tedious task and that's quite a skill to have you know especially if you're doing miniatures and whatever that's that's pretty crazy man i wish i was able to do stuff like that a little bit you know what i mean surprise, mother <laughs> i forgot the battery <laughs> stuff i forgot really quick. <laughs> surprise motherfucker <laughs> Yeah, but the terrain, man. That they terrain art is crazy. Now it's time to get lit. 
even this part of it for doing miniatures having like a little bit of know-how about electricity and how to connect certain wires how to rig it up and stuff like that it's pretty nuts like that's that's an incredible skill to have as well hold on look look how clean he's keeping it all together too right it's super clean this is something that's really cool too that he makes his own little uh his little components that you're able to break off and place where you need to where you need to do them so for like the little led lights to pop up that's that's incredible it's quite a skill to have it's amazing to me I have actually no That's idea cool. if that will be bright enough at the end, but it looks pretty cool right now. Then I use some mud. And the best part about humans is it doesn't need to be bright for the lights and stuff like that because usually it's a daytime kind of thing, but that little luminescent underneath it really makes it pop. To form some hills. But guess what's still missing? Tricks. A lot of tricks. Warcraft 3 and the trees. Trees are everywhere everywhere like if i were to do these little dioramas and stuff realistically what i me myself what i would do i would make like 50 to 100 of those little trees and just bang them out as we go along kind of thing right because if you're doing a model of each race bruh that's a lot of tree well like yo you could probably get away with doing about 50 and putting less than 25 on each you probably even do like 40 10 per, depending on the size. I have right? a bad feeling about this. <laughs> I found some great looking trees from Skyptonia on my minifig tree. That's actually smart too. I would, uh, I would end up purchasing a good majority of the trees from somewhere else just to save on time. Productivity. I found some great looking trees from Skyptonia on my minifig tree, and to cut some time, I primed all the models in different colors. Primer. And now I have to paint 26 trees. I used some simple dry brushing for that, just adding brighter layers of color with less force and some shading like, at the end. Like, for me, what he's doing right here is incredible. This is dope. To do the little touch-ups and stuff like that to make it really vivid and pop. Like, that's, that's so crazy. It's so much work that goes into it, the time and effort that he took. It's super talented, he's super talented. Luckily, my ex-girlfriend and now wife helped me <laughs> I like how he introduced his wife there, eh? My ex-girlfriend, now my wife. I love his sense of <laughs> You know what I just noticed too? Pinky in the brain. <laughs> Yo, this guy. This guy's hilarious. <laughs> I love his sense of humor. <laughs> and also painted her first miniatures. Now that's a little farce. Because I wasn't able to sculpt something simple as a rock, I decided to create one with some XPS foam. Like the creativity and ingenuity too for the gold mine here that he's doing. He's like, oh well, like why would I print it? I could just carve it out. That's that's slick. And added some tiny stones to represent some gold. That's smart. Nice. 24 hours later, the modeling clay has dried, and I'm able to proceed by dipping that whole thing in PVA glue and add a variety of basing materials like stones, sand, and the tree stumps. Now let me paint that thing real quick. Like that's nuts too, right? The way how how these painters and model makers and uh, all that, the way how they do what it is that they do, that's like PVA glue, some color, and some water mixed all together. Uh, to lay it down pretty much on top so you won't lose any of uh, any of the ground there any of the terrain that he's already put down right and the attention to detail that he does is crazy you see that he did the undercoat and then the overcoat and then these dry brush little marks on top plus all these little rocks off the one side just the attention to detail that he does is incredible to me that's that's insane I can't get over just keep saying that he's super talented. Oh. <laughs> As we gold. For the paint to dry, how about you tell me in the comments which base you would like to see me build next? In the next step, I took a close look at the amazing in-game graphics and you can clearly see two different Christ types. 
We will replicate that with yet another thick layer of PVA glue and a static grass applicator I built following the wonderful instructions of Luke Town. First I added the dark green grass, then I proceeded with another layer of glue and some brighter grass. No wonder my wife is tired all the time. This is exhausting. <laughs> He has the best sense of humor, man. <laughs> like the first time I watched this, I die. I still, it kills me. <laughs> the only thing that I could think of that compares to that, you remember them shake, shake weight commercials? <laughs> I love the sense of humor. Mini quest kills me. Time to arrange all our tricks. <laughs> Look at the terrain so far, man. Looks really good. Really good. Like, you could even differentiate between the colors of the grass, the highs and lows, and all the trails in between. That's that's nuts. The attention to detail just blows me away. That's what she said. We are getting pretty close <laughs> to a finished base now. Only a few things are missing. First, I saw the frame for the tower sink and primed it black. Then I started to add some more flowers and Little other tops. tops to increase the variety. As a last extra thing, I ordered a lasered metal plate. Finally, the scourge of all the lords. In the classic blue color scheme we are so familiar with. Most of the time, I will use a technique called. So, <coughs> yeah, I'm just curious what kind of paint he actually uses. Dry brushing, like with the trees before. Because sometimes you get some primer paints too, right? And uh, man, what is it called? I can't, I, uh, it'll come like acetone or something like that, that sometimes they end up mixing with the paint that gives it that brush stroke, whatever. It's pretty crazy. Most of the time, I will use a technique called dry brushing. Like with the trees before, a simple base coat followed by a heavy wash and a couple of layers of dry brushing. I made nice. an in depth tutorial if you want to learn more about that. The walls, stones, and even roofs are all painted the same way. Now that you so as he said, he has a couple in-depth tutorials on how to do that. And like, you can even see down here, look at this. The attention to detail that he does is, is like crazy, bro. That's so crazy. Make sure that you check out Mini Quest 64 for sure if, if you're into miniatures and stuff like that. Now that you know the basics, let me finish the rest real quick. Like, even the straw. Hold on. Like, the little strokes that he's doing here. You end up looking. Look at that. It came out looking pristine on top of the chimneys. Man, the attention to detail just blows me away. That's so crazy. It's a quick little story time. When I was younger, when ROC first came out, Warhammer 40k was already out. Right? Um... So like obviously I was playing Orc. Orc was the dope thrall all the way. It's my favorite hero. But anyway, um yeah, no nah, man. I ended up getting Warhammer 40k. I got orcs. And I, I had this crazy idea in my head to be like, yo, we could make Warcraft 3 into like a tabletop kind of game. But then you have to take in consideration the timers. Because you would have to have a bunch of different timers from a one minute, two minute, two and a half minute, five minute, three minute, so on and so forth, right? You'd need a bunch of timers or like digital timers connected to the board in order for you to put stuff up, right? So it's like, it'd be super intricate. It would never happen. Warhammer 40k is the closest that we will ever get to uh, play like uh, Warcraft 3 on a, on a tabletop, which is like humans and orcs crazy right uh but yeah no man what he's doing right here this is crazy talented man this is insane i can't get over saying that either he's incredibly talented for what he's doing alter Woo! even the gold mine bro Yo, he hand painted those, the logos. He hand no d de decals, straight hand painted them, Jenks. That's crazy, man. 
I love it. Uther joins the battle. One more surprise for you. Look at the detail on Uther's face, bro. He even got his eyes nice, his hair proper, his beard proper, all of that. That's insane. Super talented. Super, super talented. Mini Quest 64, you're super talented, my friend. Time to put the buildings down by professionals, of course. Like, even this, the gold mine looks on point. Like, ridiculously on point. That's nuts. Of course. Yes, me lord. So he's going to start setting up the base. Oh, work. What? Right oh. Off I go then. Here you go. So hold on. What? Right oh. Off I go then. All right. So this is the this is the layout of the base, right? This is his layout right here. So what I would have done, a little bit different. Altar probably would have been up here. Or I probably would have put, like, just in-game. Not for the, this is incredible. I love the way how he has this set up. But in-game, I would probably have the lumber mill up here, right? Uh, probably a couple, like, one of the farms here, here. Towers are fine where they are. That up there. I would put the altar a little bit further back and the barracks right here so that you can pump your units your altar will be safe from getting attacked by anybody you'll have two farms in front to protect your towers and then the other two you could even just like put down here put one here and one over here just to like interrupt the flow of people trying to come through and de and destroy your base in game but like the diorama itself is incredible here you go let me know down below what you would change about the layout in game. Uther, and now we can enjoy. Sick Freaking damage. Uther. That's so crazy. It's so amazing. I'm so Shall glad I stumbled upon his page. And met, and thanks to all of you for your support. Shout out everybody that's been able to so donate him for him to be, be able to do this. And printing, build a landscape and painted 47 models in three days for you to watch. It's a 10 minute video. Build a landscape and painted 40. So I worked three months on this thing. He worked three months. Four weeks of sculpting four and weeks printing. Sculpting build a landscape and painting, and painted 47 built the landscape. 47 mo models painted in three days. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. I'll let him finish describing what it is that he did, but that's nuts. And that's just for our entertainment for 8 minute and 20 second video. So talented, man. So talented. I I appreciate you, Mini Quest 64. Sing. And that's Four that's amazing. Of sculpting and printing, build a landscape and painted 47 models in 3 days for you to watch a 10 minute video. And before I knew what was happening to me, I myself became a peasant. <laughs> and you know what? I do it again. <laughs> Yo, huge shout out to MiniQuest64. Thank you for allowing me to react to your video. I'm going to be sending it to him too. Uh, all links are going to be down in the description. Make sure you go check him out. Drop a follow and a like if that's something that you're into. Uh, he has a series. He has all the bases completed for all the races and stuff like that. So throughout the next, next couple weeks... We are going to be reacting to it. I asked his permission. He said that that was all right. Send him the video after. Let me see how he feels about it. Hopefully, I did it justice for you, bro. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we also have a couple of the grubby tier lists that we need to go over as well. So look forward to that coming up as well. But yeah, no, man. Feels great to be back. Not so sick anymore. Going to be live tonight for a stream. Appreciate everybody for coming through. Feel free, leave a like, subscribe. Also, let me know down in the comments what you would change about the in-game structure of how you would place everything in the base. But until next time, take care of yourself and each other. I'll be seeing you guys later, man. Peace.